Hey guys, I am here today in Portugal, back to visit our supplier for the Acoustic Cork and Eco Cork. And today I'm gonna to try and show you as much as I can. There's a lot of stuff that's secretive and we're not allowed to actually show you or film. So I'm gonna try and show you as much as I'm allowed to before I get in trouble. But we're here today to go through a few things to see how our product's going, uh, see a few new developments that are coming up, um, and of course, to see all of our friends that we uh, have been dealing with for such a long time. So I'm gonna take you guys through a lot of the parts of the warehouse that we're allowed to access and show you different components of the process that goes that's involved in making the acoustics that we bring into Australia and give a bit of a background, a bit of behind the scenes uh, without obviously getting in trouble and showing you too many things that I'll um, get in trouble for. <laughs> so join me and I'll take you through about what's approximately 120,000 square metres of under roof space of factories, which for any football fans, that's about 15, 16 full football fields. And this is just one of the manufacturing plants that we're gonna be visiting today. So I'll take you through and show you all the bits and pieces. Look at us, we're all ready to go. We've even got these funny little shoe things <laughs> so, so we can kick each other. <laughs> Very stylish. Alrighty, so this is where the process well, not exactly starts, this is the second part of the process. All this stuff here, that you can see behind me, is all raw cork. So this is actually the bark of a cork tree. And it's actually essential that they take this cork off the tree, because if they don't, the tree actually can die and it can stunt its growth. So by taking the cork off the tree, or the bark, every seven to nine years, it then allows the tree to rejuvenate itself and to grow more and to grow more cork. And then the, the pattern then repeats itself. And by doing that, the tree then doesn't live for 25 years, which is normal. It'll then live for close to 250 years. So this is exactly how the cork first starts off the tree. So you can see it's bark there, like, a tro like it would be on the outside of the tree. And then you can see the cork on the inside. And they then grind this up and make multiple different products, including acoustic cork or eco cork. But the first thing they generally do with this, which is most important for them, is to turn it into cork stoppers for your wine bottles. And then they use other bits and pieces for other parts of the process. Have a look, that's just that's just one of tons and tons of this stuff that comes in every single day. There's tons and tons of this stuff. Look right up close so you can actually see some of the cork grains already in there. It's actually got a little bit of little bit of flex in it as well. Track load coming in, and they would have literally hundreds of these every day. And then there's another lot getting dumped, ready for production. And that's as simple as that. Another truck lined up, ready to go. Right here, these are all used cork stoppers that have actually come out of wine bottles. You can see some of the wine on the end of it. They recycle eight million of these every single year and it's increasing rapidly. And they then reuse these, crush them up, and then turn them into more cork products. Have a look, you can see some of the brands on some of these. Whatever that brand is, I'm not sure. Look at that. <laughs> Here we go. Here's some of the cork granules that they actually buy in from other factories who don't have the technology that these guys do. So this stuff here, as you can see, will get turned into multiple different products, maybe back into cork stoppers again, or maybe acoustic cork. Or the other thing they do with this particular product is when it gets even finer than this, I can see how small this is, when it gets even finer like powder, they then use that to fuel most of the energy that's required to run all of these factories that I'm going to show you. And I'm told it's about 65% of their power is from burning this stuff here, really, really slowly. So again, more eco-friendly, stuff, just tons of it. 
So this is 0 0.5 2 millimeters? 0 0.5 to 1. To 1? 0 0.5 to 2. Wow. All right, so behind me, after the product gets mulched into different granules, it then gets compressed into blocks. I'm not allowed to go too close to them because there's codes on them that people aren't allowed to see. But then they get put into blocks like this behind me and then they get sliced into sheets, into the acoustic that we then use in high rises. Here we go. More piles of excess or waste that they then reuse and turn back into more core products. For example, we, we produce cork memo boards, but the cork memo boards, they don't have a massive sheet of cork. Yeah. They are made with a, a sandwich of corrugated cardboard and two sides cork. It's a sandwich. There you go. So that's straight off a tree. That's taken straight from a tree. They then boil it and then pop the corks out. This is where they use the cork on the grass, the synthetic grass. Insulation for the suspended ceiling, like you'd have in a high rise, and then got the flooring, and of course, cork underlay, and then more cork for between the slabs for even more acoustic. Just cork, and some of them they I know they got a mix of compound of the rubber and cork exactly. for the gaskets. This is an example of the um, thin layer of cork that is uh, printed. Ah, and then so that looks like looks like wood, looks but like in wood. fact it's so this is cork. Um, that's actually digital, that's print. digital printing. And then they on cork. Print over the top. Timber, laminate, wow. tile, of course. Wow, that's a big difference. Okay. The top of the rocket ship. So this is the side panel of a train. All around the world, and this cork inside. Yeah. And this is on planes. All of the clothes. That's a, that, that's a table, there you Josh. Go. Oh, we, we got very fun later. Here we go, we got a jacket. So, for exfoliating, you're saying? Yeah, yeah that's right, exfoliating grease. <laughs> and the, the oil, the cork oil, is for soaps. This is cork oil? Yeah. What? All right, so now, after I've shown you the peeling of the bark, the mulching of the cork, the sorting of the cork, the compressing of the cork, making it into blocks and then cutting into sheets, now I'm here in Australia where we are just about to receive a full container load where they then package it up for us, send it all the way to Australia, and then we unload it here, and then this, come with me, is then, our final product, Eco Cork Acoustics. A whole new container that's probably partly already sold, with another one on its way. <laughs>